Hi, I'm Andrew Stevenson, and in today's video we're going to make a line journal, back to basics, but this time we're going to do it in Adobe InDesign. Because it was Black Friday slash Cyber Monday slash excellent deal week, Adobe had an offer where the Creative Cloud was £26 as opposed to, I think it's 65 quid, something like that, um, with a seven day free trial. So I've signed up for the free trial. I'm undecided whether I'll keep it because I do like Affinity uh, and I'm more used to that. But there are some pretty good things in Photoshop and Illustrator and things like that. So for 26 quid a month, I might just keep it. But today we're working in InDesign. So the first thing to do is to start a new document. So we'll go to a new file. And we will set this up. So we're going to use millim uh, sorry inches, and we're going to go six by nine. So that's already set up. We're going to have facing pages, we'll have these margins. These margins I got from the KDP website, KDP guides, and the blade again, I got it from the KDP guide web page and this is the document so it it's slightly different to a affinity but most of the things are still there so I'm going to start off in master pages or parent pages and to get the master page we'll just click on a And this is the page that's going to repeat through the book. So I'll do a double page spread and it's just going to be simple lines. Now there are two ways to do this. One is much easier than the other. I'll start off with a more convoluted way. And that is with the table tool. So in InDesign the table tool gets put into a text box which kind of makes things a little bit more, well not complicated, a little bit more different. Than, than what we used to work with Affinity. So we will go to table, create a table. And here's where we set up the body rows, columns, etc. We're just going to do a simple table, 30 rows, one column. A 30 rowed table is too big for this size of page with the line space I want, but no, we'll, we'll sort that out in the next couple of steps. So I'll click OK. And now I need to draw a box for the table to fit in, a text box. So I'm going to use the full bleed because I want these lines to go at the edge of the page. So drag it out across the bleed, into the centre of the book, and down to the bottom. And that's the table there. So this is a 30 rowed table just all fitted into that text box. So no matter how big I made the text box, it would still have 30 rows on it. I do apologise for my voice as well. It is, uh, I have an awful, awful cold. The next thing to do is to actually set up the size of the, the cells. So to do that, we'll just select all of the rows. Table, cell options, rows and columns. Now, I want this to be 8 mil. It's in inches, but if you type in millimetres, it's fine. It converts it. So, I, I want the row height to be at least, in fact, I'll just change it to exactly 3 point, 0 0.315. The column width is just the width of the entire selection I have there, which is the bleed. So what this is going to do is just space out the lines ever so slightly. But what it means is that it's forced off some of the rows from the bottom of the text box. So instead of there being 30 cells there, there's probably 20, 28, 29. But that's not a problem. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll sort the rest of that out soon. Now I also like a bit of a gap 
the space above the top line for me should be larger than the rest of the lines. So we could have done that just by making the table uh, start a, a little bit further down the page. Or we can just position it. Just pull it down to where we want. So I'll hold down shift and drag the table down to there. I'll just press W to put it in a preview mode. I think I don't think that's bad space and wise, so I'll keep that as it is. Another thing that we could do is because there are still some invisible see there's some invisible um rows here. We could delete them and we could delete them just by selecting the amount of rows we want. See if we want to delete that many. Select them, right click, delete. And you can see they've gone from the bottom. Or we could just leave them because they're not going to export when we because they're not going to be there when we export the file. You know, they're not they're not a part of the, the export area. So I'll just leave them for now. The next thing to do is to as you can see, this line here, we don't need it. There's also a line on this side, which I will take off, even though you can't see it because it's in the bleed. So to do that, we we'll select all the columns again. Table. And now we've we'll got rows and, uh, sorry, strokes and fill. And now we want to select the bits that we want to influence with this bit here with these changes that we'll make. So I'm going to deselect all of the horizontal lines because I want them to stay where they are. Keep the two sides selected. Change the colour down to none. So the two outside borders have gone. I also want the line weight to be uh, less. The the lines are quite bold there. I want, it, I want it to be a bit thinner. So we'll go back in the table, cell options, and now because I want to affect the horizontal lines, I'll leave them selected. I will drop this down to 0 0.5. You can also change the colour as well and the type of line, so you could have it any of these, but I'll keep it as a solid line. And that's it. That's your perfect lined page. So because this is a two-page parental page, a two-page master page, I want it on the other side as well. So select it all. And it's normally control shift and drag. But that just moves it. In this, for some reason, it's... Control Alt and drag. That copies it over. And that's it. That's a simple lined journal using the table tool. We'll just add 100 pages and that's that. The other way to create a lined page is by using something called step and repeat. So we'll just do that in a new document. So here's a new document. It's exactly the same setup as previous. Again, we'll do this in parent pages. And to do this, we need the line tool. And again, do it where you want. I'm going to have this one um, inside the margin. So hold down shift and then just click and drag. So this way, when the book is printed, there'll be a white margin around the outside. Now this line, we're going to step and repeat it all the way down the page so when it set this lines properties up first so in the properties panel you can see it's at one point we want it to be half or whatever you want and i'm also going to keep it as a solid black you play with it as you feel fit so with the line selected we go to edit step and repeat and this dialog window opens up. So as you can see on the page now, we now have this new line. And that is because we have a 1 here in the count. And the offset tells it to move it on the horizontal 1.55 millimetres. 
Now we don't want to move it on the horizontal, we want to move it vertically. So I'll just delete that from the horizontal box. And I'm working in millimetres now, so 8 mil. Now I'm not going to press enter yet because I want to add some more to the count. But as you can see, it's put one underneath. Now, just keep on clicking the plus until you get as many lines as you need. Now, of course, you want this copy onto both pages, so you can either select it and drag it across, or you could create it as a grid with two columns and when shift the horizontal, so the new. Um, so it's repeated. Now, I should have really made a note of what number was in the horizontal box at first. I can't recall, so I'll just put. It's going to be something like 6.25 inches. Not too bad, I'll just knock that down a smidge. Perfect, there you go. So that simply populates both pages with the lines you want. And then again, it's just a simple case of. So we'll add. 99 more pages and parent A. Now to export, it's very simple. File, export. There are some presets there, but we'll just click on export. Now when you export, you get the, a little dialog box. You get a, a, a place to save the file name. And then you get this dialog box. And it's just letting you change the settings of the export so we're going to do it is high quality print we're going to do all pages rather than spreads pages that's all fine we want to go to uh, again, mess about with all this if you want i don't fully understand it so i'm leaving it one thing to do is to include the bleed settings and then click export there's a little summary there if you want, if you are interested in that and here is the PDF. So we have the lines, we have the larger line, at the, the larger space at the top. We've got the white margin. The bleed's also included in that as well. So out of the two ways to create a line book there, I definitely prefer that step and repeat. I'm not really practiced enough with the table tool. But the table tool was, was fine. It was easy enough as well. Now, in Affinity, of course, we use the table tool to create the the lines. You can also use uh, Power Duplicate to do something similar to this. But I like I like this method, step and repeat. It's it's you draw one line, bash in a couple of numbers, and then and then you've got a line journal very quickly, very easy. So I think for creating these sort of line notebooks, InDesign wins it there. So that is it for today's video. Just a simple one. You know, I'll do a few more around these in design uh, and other Adobe products for low content books just because I've got it. And even if I just use the free trial, you know, I want to get me money's worth, even though it was free. So I'll be making a few more videos showing you how to make low content books with Adobe products. So thanks for watching, and I shall see you next time.